Um, that we sound like. Oh, you do. Uh, yeah. Your daughter's name is Clary, <laughs> right. and your wife's name is Gates. Right. You sound like distant relatives of the Kennedys. <laughs> and when they have those like, announcements, the guy goes, joining the board was Gates and Kennedy. They weren't English, I don't know why, but, but, but they always have the guys at the front be English. They just sound better. So even if you have a terrible name, now I'm going to insult somebody. But if you were like, if you were, welcome, girl, my pile. It's like, it sound, doesn't sound bad. Come on, right, guys. Let's mouth. roll. Let's roll. Babylon and uh... safety first. <laughs> Well, let's go to music. Let's talk about your uh, let's talk about your playlist here. So I listen to um, I work out. I go running. I can't lift weights. Clearly, um, I don't know how why the shot is, but uh, this is pretty thick material. Um, but I do I do a lot of running, and um, I go to Runyon Canyon, which is where we're headed right now, and uh, it's really it's a it's a beautiful um, outdoor you know scenic run and. What I do is, when I listen to my iPod, I listen to 80s montage music. So I listen to, like, at the end of the movie Teen Wolf, right. there's that, that song, Win in the End, um, which I listen to. And I actually have a playlist called Montage on my iPod. Or I have You're the Best Around by Joe uh, Bean Esposito from a little film called The Karate Kid. Um, I have another one called um, Rock Until You Drop, which is, um, I believe, by E.G. Daly, and that's... Uh, that's from the movie Monster Squad. And uh, just because I grew up in that, I really like that. I, I, like, I like 80s movies and I like, um, it inspires me. I got the one from The Wizard, Send Me an Angel. I got them all, people. Um, that, that would be the first album of what Kite Calls Music, is uh, 80s montage. So I listen to a lot of um, that type of stuff. My mother um, works and has worked for 30 some odd years in country music. So I listen to everything. Um, rap, R&B, uh, you know, I don't, I think that if there was one thing that I probably don't listen to as a, a one of my good buddies is a, like a speed metal guy. Yeah. And so I always, I'm always open to listening to it in the car cause he'll, he'll, he'll like tell me the new speed metal stuff and I'll listen to it and I'm every now and then I'll find something, but it's a general thing. I don't, I don't listen to a lot of speed metal. Um, but I love, uh, rock country, everything. I'm, and I, and I kind of listen to, I'm the worst DJ at a party because they'll be like, yeah, let's use your iPod. And then it'll be, it'll be like, it'll be like Duran Duran, come undone. And then it'll be, and then it'll be like, like, you know, all my exes live in Texas and people are <laughs> like, somebody has a record player there just so they can scratch it and stop the room. Like there's another, there's like, I, I just, uh, you know, it's like they don't, people are like, and, and then there was Michael Jackson um, you know, just ran, but but like the slowest Michael Jackson song that you'd only play, like the Lady in My Life. Like exactly, that. you'd only play it in a credit sequence <laughs> if somebody was running on a beach towards the ocean. And like you just don't. That there's like there's no like you could listen to it by yourself or or you know I mean it's a great listen, but at a party, and I have a lot of party stuff. Like I love Rick Ross, and like my other big playlist. Is um I really like rap and R&B, and I'm a huge Rick Ross fan. I like I really love Lil Wayne, um, Eminem. Uh, saw him in concert in Vegas. Uh, big, you know, like I really enjoy that type of music. I, I love Kanye and uh, Jay Z. And so when my friends and I go out, we uh, we I play if 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 I get to um, hijack the iPod, I always put on Rick Ross. Like um like there's a song out right now called John. It's Lil Wayne. It's on the Carter Four. And it's um, it's with him and Rick Ross, and that song is sick. I listen to that song almost every day before I go into work, mm -hmm. because I think, um, you know, we get up. I get up fairly early in the morning, like six a.m. or six thirty, and um, you know, sometimes I'm not there, but I, that song always really pumps me up to go. I, I love, uh, I just I love that. It's funny. I um I often because they trim my beard up on the show, but there's periods when we go on hiatus. You know, when we shoot some episodes and then we're done. And I always come back, and I always tell the um, the, the hair and makeup person, uh, my friend Malika, I always say, "Yo, I got Ross beard, time to trim." <laughs> it's just because it just it just gets like it gets like a haze uh, or a, uh, a hedge maze. Other music I'm trying to get else. I'm listening. The new group that I'm listening to right now that's not new is I'm listening to a lot of Duran Duran. I took a road trip with my cousin, and we were listening. We had rented a car. Um, and there was a serious uh, XM radio, it, mm -hmm. and the, and Come Undone, mm -hmm. 
mm-hmm. came on the air, and I thought, and I'd, I'd heard it a hundred times, but I'd heard it in that moment when we were driving back. So what happened was, we drove up to San Francisco or San Jose um, for the wedding, and we took we didn't take one of our cars because um, I drive a ninety nine, and he drives. Um, like a 72 I don't know what he drives but it's not we, we weren't sure it was going to make the trip to Mordor and um, we uh, we were really tired and we stayed for the wedding but we decided to just drive back we decided we're like we're not going to stay we'd already rented a hotel room we were just like let's go home we both have a ton of work to do I had lines to work on for Monday so we drive back we've been in the car you know it's like I don't remember how many hours like five six hours there and five six hours back the wedding was an incredible time. We were all really, we were partied out, but we're like, let's drive back. So at this point, we are finding ourselves in our own road trip 80s movie. <laughs> and and that song comes on. I mean, we, 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 we're kind of foggy faced to each other and we're going, oh man, we don't know if this was the best idea. And Come Undone comes on. And I remember we kind of turned to each other. Probably wasn't the safest that one of us wasn't watching the road at 65 <laughs> or 70. And went, this song is an amazing song. <laughs> and it really got me back into just listening to Duran Duran, a group that I have liked for a long time. Um, and so I've been listening to a lot of that. In terms of new there's, bands. There's oh, another good. great song from that same Duran Duran album that I really, the other big single from it that I really love, uh, Ordinary World. Oh, it's yeah. Really, God. There's yeah. some really cool chord chord changes in that that are kind of cool. They're, yeah, amazing. They're so great. And they're still touring, which is mm-hmm. awesome. They were just here, but I had to work. Um, white people problems, right? <laughs> Might have worked at a TV show. I couldn't see Dar- Duran Duran. <laughs> um, but, uh... Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll cut in some pictures of, like, Ethiopian star, maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of Sally Struthers. Yeah. Um, <laughs> me as Sally Struthers. Um, I, um, I like... In terms of, like, brand new bands, I really like... Not brand new, because they've been around for a while, but they're really hitting it big as of late as Mumford & Sons. Oh, yeah. Because I really like folk music. Um, I think, uh, my, I mean, I really, Simon & Garfunkel is um, one of my favorite bands of all time, and I like that there's, it's, it's kind of coming back in the country. I really like country, old and new. I'm, I love Hank Williams, um, and uh, I like that there's kind of an old feel. Uh, Two Broke Girls This Fall uh, on there CBS. You go. Look at that, look at that. Where's your pretty face up there? You know what? I'm actually, this is true. I have to, I'm going to figure out how to get back there. Yeah. And um, again, this is, hopefully this is not being taped right now, this conversation. <laughs> and I'm going to try to stand in the middle, like, like Rocky, <laughs> and have someone, and have someone take a picture. I'm serious. I'm trying to, I got to figure out when there's, there's the least amount of police traffic that's going here. And, um, <laughs> safety first kids, by the way. And, uh, yeah, so... Those are the two lovely women that I'm lucky enough to work with every day. Harrison Ford is my... F- I love Harrison Ford at interviews. Because that guy, I mean, he, he's been around forever, and he's right. done it all. I mean, the three Indiana Jones films, I didn't say the fourth. Um, and uh, the three Star Wars films, you know, he's he's in the six highest... I, there was a number because he got back end points or something. Uh-huh. Um, this is like this interview is like a Wikipedia page. We're not sure how much of it is truthful. <laughs> We're just aware that it's out there in the universe now. Um, somebody said. Somebody said, uh, not Jonathan Kite. Um, somebody you trust and love. Um, anyway, but he, I love him in interviews because he, he's just been there. He's done it all. That yeah. he has that. He just gets there. There's a great one of him on Conan. I'm plugging Conan this this fall and forever on TBS. Um, I love Conan, but uh, yeah, Harrison Ford. If I have to roll this up, let me know. I, pres- I should pretend I was pressing a button, so it seemed like it was like. <laughs> Like Michael Winslow from the Police Academy movies. Like, <laughs> you see my mouth. I'd have to have like a hand burka. <laughs> you couldn't see it go up. Anyway, um, I love Harrison Ford though. I, I do. The impressions, I will say this about the impressions that I do. They come out of a place of, um, of total respect. Yeah. Uh, every now and then, I mean, I've been on, um, I've been hired to do impressions and stuff, so I'll learn people that I have a, maybe have not heard of or aren't super familiar with. Right. And um, there's a, you know, that I, I wouldn't necessarily listen to, you know, this person or whatever. But the, the impressions growing up, um, and certainly the ones that I am most like to do, uh, are come from people that I love and I really, really, really respect. But uh, can you can we just say something real quick? Is, it, is the camera on? Yeah. What is up with the parking attendant or the paying the right aid up here? 
guys. Come. Like a valet? I don't know what it is, but they're charging you to park in the lot. Um, what? Um, anyway, it's Rite Aid, people. Um, so, also my, my favorite breakfast place in town is here, which is the other reason I'm taking Fairfax, is that it's the Griddle Cafe. I don't know if you've ever eaten there, but it's effing amazing. Uh, it's really, really, really good. It, it's, the, the food is just, it's really, um, it's extravagant. And uh, yeah, it's like if Candyland had a restaurant. Um, with with like a, a with like a salty brother, it's really good. Um, and what was up with that park intended? So I've been a fan of cats for a long time, and I perfect writing for her, and she's so brilliant on the show. And and Beth came along, and it's you know what? It's easy. I think it's easy. It's easy to like them. Period. Yeah. Let alone me, my character, whatever. They're such likable people. Yeah. And I think they're really good at their job. So I think, you, it, like, you all, you want to root for them on the show. Yeah. And um, I think the audiences really get into that because even before we had aired, um, we had really, we had a lot of people, we, you know, we had packed houses at tapings, and their audience response was so strong. It was so cool because you could tell that they weren't, they were getting behind the women, um, show like a big thing it was just kind of like this it was like a play that we were putting on like parents night at camp like that nobody had really you know maybe they had heard something about the show they probably had known Kat Dennings or Garrett Morris but the fact that they were just really behind the women from the writing I thought was just awesome and from That's their acting awesome. yeah look at that can we get a shot of that can we get a shot of that unbelievable what are you kidding me people <laughs> I go, where are you going with all that stuff? And he's like, he's like, I work at Bristol Farms. And we were like, oh, okay, cool. And then I'm, I'm like, oh, is there just like, he goes, that's where we keep, like, he didn't want to, he thought we were going to break in and steal their liquor. I'm like, dude, it just, look at you. You look like, you look like um, that, you know, like a video game where you, you're like a giant in someone's world. Or it's like an undercover giant FBI agent trying to Gulliver's travel it. I'm like... With the tiniest shopping cart. With the cart. tiniest shopping cart ever. That looks like that looks like a keychain. I feel like if you shake that cart, it goes bee, 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 bee. <laughs> like Spencer's gift. Um, anyway, so continuing with the '80s theme, Spencer's gifts. S Spencer's gifts. I just remember that. Remember, remember Arcadia. Arc oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's why Arcadia is not around anymore because that's the reaction people have. Uh, yeah, that's oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn to Jay Leno. <laughs> <laughs> it's like not. <laughs> so, this is where I do a lot of running. Is this your house right up here? Uh, one of my houses. That's why I can't afford a, a car because I'm, I'm too busy paying off the mortgages on all these houses. I live the game Monopoly. <laughs> property everywhere people <laughs> actually a hotel I had four houses and I converted them into a hotel <laughs> but I work I, I worked in a, in a as a grill cook and the, the attention to detail is incredible on set that, that's something that I really going back to another a question that you asked what I really like about the show yep. um, one thing I love about the show is Michael Patrick King's attention to detail is mm -hmm. insane. Mm -hmm. That he um, and the and the people that 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 Warner Brothers and CBS has hired, like the crew, is just incredible. The attention to detail with the costumes and the um, and the sets is just and and working in a kitchen, just knowing, that, yeah, that's how that works. Like I, yeah. it's not like a breakaway sink. It's not like that's all legit back there. Yeah. And we probably could cook back there if we needed to, <laughs> um, which is awesome. Which is you know there's um there's a flat grill, and uh, there's uh, there's there there's uh, actually there's a deep fryer back there. It's cool. There's if the apocalypse comes, you're set. As long as we're shooting a show, <laughs> I'd have to get there. I'd have to get there pretty quick. Um, but it's great. It's and they have um, uh, they have all those giant, uh, you know, jars of pickles that we actually try to work into the show. Um, and it's cool because then you don't have to avoid. Like I feel like when when I'm not me, but I feel like when you do projects where the set is bad or like when the stuff isn't great, you're like you're not acting. You're trying to avoid 
the set <laughs> because it looks like you don't want to draw a, a de you know attention to how bad it looks. Yeah. But this is so easy to just live in that world. Like I, I actually feel a sense of a, a real sense of comfort in having been there and then having them being like, no, this is how it is, and, and me being like, yeah, exactly. This is this is yeah. great. So, um, so yeah, Michael's attention to detail is incredible. Let's see, there's some people walking. It's like a unicorn sighting. <laughs> but if they have a dog, it doesn't count because they're doing it for the dog. <laughs> I'm not judging those people. I don't know those people. I don't know if I did. I use these interviews to rip on people I knew. I conveniently would drive past people I don't like to be like, oh, what a douchebag. <laughs> right? Right, America? You agree with me. Unfortunately, we can't take this, we can't take this off-road. We can't uh, Mountain Dew commercial this. Anymore. Anymore. Yeah, there's some art. Uh, but by the time you see that, all those glorious paintings will be sold. This is what the the impossible task, and we won't we won't because we can't find parking. Um, but you try to find parking, full and complete stop, and you come up here, and Runyon is just a place to relax, you know. So that is that. Um, I could take you to my favorite restaurant, which is, well, my favorite restaurant in Hollywood is Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. Nice. Um, nice. That is the, that's the ish. That stuff is so good. Um, it's good all the time. And uh, I did, um, I did a play. Um, there's, there are two locations of uh, Roscoe's and I did a play and we would go afterwards because it was con the theater was conveniently located um, for my arteries across the street from the other Roscoe's Chicken and Waffles. So anytime I wanted it, it was great. Um, and this is the one in Hollywood. It's open later. It's off of Gower Street. And it's great because you, it's like a, after the bars close, everybody heads there. You know, it's like they, they sh shined a bat signal there of food and people just kind of like, mm, you know, the Thundercats when he goes, oh, and they all go, mm. that's what everyone does after the bars. So it's cool. So it's always lively and there's a ton of people there. And when I was bring, uh, whenever people visit, when w they say, what's one thing we have to do when we're in LA? And I always say, go to Roscoe's. Nice. Gotta go to Roscoe's. Um, and then I've been going, I think I've been going to Roscoe's. It reminds me of of, I'm from Chicago, from Skokie, Illinois, right outside Chicago. Uh, it, it reminds me of, of cooking from like the Midwest or the South where I've spent a lot of time. And it's just, there's no, I don't think there's any, there's any attention to, you know, there's nothing wheatgrass on the menu. You know, uh, maybe the chickens were wheatgrass fed, I don't know. But uh, it's, the, it's great, the food is so good. No alfalfa sprouts. None. Yeah. No, no, there's, I think you can get collard greens there. That's the only sprout. Um, collard greens soaked in pork fat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> collard greens wrapped around butter. That's their version, that's their version of the lettuce sandwich of the garden burger. It's called the garden butter. And you have to show them your insurance card before you eat that. Don't, don't die here. You have to eat that outside the property. Because in case you die, it's like, I don't know, city officials, I don't know what happened. A lot of urine smell here. It's like a Yankee candle shop, but they only have the urine candle. <laughs> and you can't find the candle to put it out. It's just there. It's always a lot of urine. A lot of urine. It is going to be on your right is Iowa West in a little bit. Uh, where I, we, uh, my, my friends and I were involved in an improv cage match for a year, we we won for 52 weeks in a row, and then we retired, which was pretty cool. So we got to do that every Monday night, and it uh, it was nice. It, it defined a year of my life because we actually started right on my right after my birthday, and then we went for the year, and we were done. It was really cool. And then there's the Popeyes, where I've seen some interesting improv theater done as well. Absolutely, it's more street theater. It's more um, gorilla. Um, more gorilla, yeah, yeah, yeah. With people yelling at you about things you can't understand. There's the iOS theater. I'm slowing that to impede traffic. Here is a farmer's market, which is awesome about LA because they're everywhere. You know? 
We could actually sell this to the Travel Channel. <laughs> this conversation. Um, yeah, the 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 street art that happens at Popeyes, it's you gotta come. You know, come for the Roscos, stay for the Popeyes. You really, you really get some. Uh, you learn a lot about life there. Learn valuable lessons about life and love. About, about drug usage. About how it, it's a dead end for everybody, people. <laughs> Don't believe me. Come on down. The crack is whack. The crack is whack. The smack is whack. <laughs> Let's talk about honey smacks. And then whack is a good thing. honey badgers. Honey badgers. Honey badgers don't give a shit. He don't give a shit. You know what? I kind of believe that, though. <laughs> He's like the Super Dave Osborne of animals. <laughs> He's just going to do stunts. He's just doing his thing. I just sneeze. Excuse me? Stifle totally, sneeze. Totally legal, legal U-turn. Um, I stifled the sneeze because my window doesn't look like it can take another sneeze. <laughs> now that I have a, it looks like it. it. looks like it was in a paintball fight with a nose. Passing a little minor film company here. A little startup. I think they might, I think they got a shot. Yeah, yeah. Paramount means Indian Swahili. <laughs> wow. We can get Hank Williams Jr. to do it. He's not doing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's not getting much work now, right? He's going to hear this and he's like, that guy's like Hitler. <laughs> Am I? Am I Hank Williams Jr.? <laughs> I love his music. I love his music, hate his Hitler references. <laughs> Thank goodness the two have never uh, merged. Yeah, yeah. Are you ready for some Hitler references? <laughs> Trademark. That one's mine, Hank. That one's mine. Yeah, I like... Uh, it's cool. That's one thing. I used to have the job that Oleg had... Uh, has at a diner. I used to be a grill cook in college, wow. so I really like that back there. Um, the, the the attention to detail, I love it, dude. He's we're in a rap video right now, but like the worst rap video that you could ever imagine. My He's doing his hair. my backup dancers are Jersey Shore guys that couldn't make it. That that guy is the worst backup dancer you could ever imagine. You know, that was like. That was great. That, that, that guy had one move. He, he's a puppeteer he backup dancer. He, that's all he does. Like, he, you, you give him a puppet, that puppet could do all this shit. But if you just him, he's like, dog, this is the only move I know. I know, junior high dance. Uh, but he uh. was working that one move. He was he? working it. I'm not, you, you gotta respect that one move. That guy was doing it. That guy was doing it. I like the fix the hair thing because there was no mirror. So he was just guessing about what his hair looked like. And then he put his hat back on. Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> he, he fixed his hair for his hat. Respect the hat, yo. Respect the hat. I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that this interview was today and not yesterday because we would have sounded like we were in a wind tunnel with all the open glass back there. It looked like I had removed the window to get a clear shot of the guy behind me with a gun. Like, can somebody bash out that window so we can shoot these motherfuckers? Oh, it's the Melrose Trading Post. Did not know. See, full circle of life. Um, that's where we passed before. Melrose Trading Post. We're in a car version of the restaurant scene in Goodfellas, <laughs> where the block is only half a block, but we just keep moving, and it's it seems shot. like a, it's a one shot, guys. <laughs> I'm a big old movie buff, mm -hmm. and I think of. I like that. Like, I like to come on the lot. It, it reminds me of old Hollywood. And the other day, when I was leaving this, um, when I was leaving uh, the lot, all of these things were happening simultaneously, and it looked it's a oh. fire truck and somebody had a horse, and it was all these. <laughs> it was like a you know, it was a perfect game of Frogger. Like everybody was kind of moving in and out of things, and they. It was just really cool. Oh, that's so cool. It was like it reminded me of the old studio system. So, um, it was, I like that. I like the fact, and the, and the buildings look relatively the same, mm -hmm. you know, and I just I like that tradition. To know that, and then actually on the, on our plaque on our wall, they have movies that were filmed on the lot that we are on. Oh my god! Uh, in the building, and it was Casablanca, which is one of my all-time favorite. Peter Lorre was the first impression I ever did, and um, I love that movie so much. And it's just so cool to know that that that's there. 
or that was there. It was, it was really nice to be walking in the footsteps, right? Yeah, it's it's really it's really incredible. I mean, the just the just Warner Brothers being as powerful and successful, and just to know that in a small way you're now a part of that, or you get you're along for that ride, is really cool. It's, you know, a company you really respect. How long would edited together will this interview be? Uh, two to three hours. Yeah. I, I, it feels like it. <laughs> it's called the year in the life of. In real time. In real, exactly. It's it, it's our version of Big Brother. 